Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R730 XD. In this video, we're going to specifically cover RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 XD. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, so let's get rolling. Uh, we're going to cover all the different options uh, for RAID on the R730 XD, and then we're going to compare those options. Then we're going to actually install an H330 for you, and then we're actually going to log in and show you how to configure RAID 5. So that's what we're going to cover in this video as a whole. So let's start with the, uh, the different options. All right, so let's talk about the different styles, and then we'll talk about the different options. So uh, there's two styles right here. You'll see all the mini monos, and this is the PCIe version. Um, really, both are great options, so it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. But I personally like the mini monos. Uh, there's a designated spot uh, carved out in the motherboard where you can install the mini monos, uh, whereas with the um, PCIe, you're going to end up using one of your six PCIe slots, um, which personally, I like to save those for a number of other, other things such as NVMe. Um, so I'm a big fan of the mini monos, okay? So with the uh, mini monos, um, we're going to cover, we're going to show you all the differences between them. Um, so uh, not featured, uh, but we'll start with is the S130. The S130 is an onboard software. Uh, so obviously I wouldn't be able to feature it because it's not a hardware RAID, it's a software RAID. Um, the RAID levels that you can get with the S130 is 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache, of course. Uh, the drive speeds are going to be 6 gigabit per SATA and 12 gigabit per SAS, and it is a PCIe 3.0. Uh, the first hardware RAID that you're going to actually get is the HBA330. And this is a pass-through, uh, so you're not going to actually get any RAID levels, and you can see there's no cache on it. Uh, you're going to get the same drive speeds, and you're going to also get a PCIe 3.0, um, and this is the first hardware RAID. Next up is the H330, uh, which is a very great option for storage. Uh, the H330 will get you RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 10, and 50. There's no cache, as you can see. Uh, you're going to get the same exact drive speed, 6 gigabit per SATA and uh, 12 gigabit for SAS, and then PCIe 3.0 or Gen 3.0, okay? And obviously a hardware RAID as well. Going up next is the H730. The H730 is the most popular um, RAID card for the R730 XD. I'm a big fan of it. It's what we build with most of the time. Um, this is great, like I said, for storage, uh, but this is the most utilized RAID card. You're going to get RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. So obviously the 6 and the 60 are the um, added benefits. You're also going to get one uh, gigabyte of cache, so that's uh, an additional feature that you get compared to the H330 is the cache that's uh, uh, there, okay? Um, and you're going to get uh, the same speeds, uh, it's PCIe uh, Gen 3.0, um, and obviously it's a hardware RAID as well. So next up is the H730P, also a very great option, uh, very similar to the H730 in the sense of RAID levels 015, 610, 50, 60. The difference is you get two gigabytes of cache. Um, and then you're going to get the same drive speeds, uh, same for the PCIe Gen 3.0, and obviously also a hardware rig, okay? Um, now, not featured, uh, which would look very similar to this, is the H830, which is only going to be uh, in a PCIe version. You cannot get that with the Mini Mono. Uh, the H830 is going to be 015, 610, 50, 60, two gigabytes of cache, uh, same drive speeds, uh, same as well, Gen uh, PCI Gen 3.0, and it's a hardware RAID. Um, it's very, very similar to the H730P, just the PCIe version, okay? All right, so now that we know uh, all the different options, the differences between them, I want to actually show you how to install both options, and then we're going to configure RAID 5 with our H330, uh, which the steps for that will be the same if you were to configure RAID 6 for your H730 or RAID 60 or whatever. Um, this is just going to show you uh, generally how to go into your system and how to actually, uh, the step-by-step -step procedures to configure your RAID. Let's get going. All right, so we're going to go ahead and install our H330 Mini Mono RAID card. Uh, so this is all we're going to need, a screwdriver and the RAID card. So I do recommend a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. In this case, um, I'm going with a uh, just regular screwdriver as opposed to an electric, um, just because I, you know, I've noticed that uh, the, uh, or the SAS cable 
for the raid. It gets stripped really easy, these screws. Uh, they're a little bit finicky, so I prefer just to use a, a regular screwdriver. Anyhow, all right, so we're going to need to remove riser one. And this will just give us a little more access. And then we're going to remove the air baffle, OK? So now we have uh, just perfect access to get uh, to the cable itself. Um, and the cable should be installed because even if you don't have a RAID card, you need the RAID cable uh, just to be able to plug and drives and have it communicate. Um, so the RAID cable should be installed, but if your RAID cable is not installed, I will just note real quick that you need to make sure you run it under the uh, fan bank um, and it just comes right across and plugs in. Uh, but this uh, can be a little bit tricky, so just make sure you have enough slack when you're doing it is really the only key, um, and make sure you run it under the fan bank, and there's a little black uh, plastic piece right here that you want to make sure you tuck it behind that black plastic piece, and that would be the, the key for the, uh, the SAS cable here. So, all right, so um, what we're going to want to do is unhook the perk cable to start. Okay, so uh, it's officially unscrewed, um, and it gets wedged in between these two black pieces, so you just kind of have to uh, pull it out a little like this. There we go. Actually, that screw is still in there, unfortunately. So we will um, go ahead and pull it out, and we are good to install our uh, Mini Mono. All right, so um, this is honestly a very simple process overall. I'm going to kind of pull my cable to the side uh, just to give you guys a better view. So you'll notice there's some holes um, on the connector for the Mini Mono. You're going to line that up with the two, these two holes here. But the first thing you need to do before you line that up is you actually need to take this and uh, kind of place it under these two black clips here to get this fully into uh, to space. So my hands might be blocking it a little bit, uh, but we're going to slide this under right here. Okay. And then you will notice this can come straight down, almost like a hinge, but obviously you don't want to hinge it because you can damage the PCB. But um, it'll come straight down, and then it'll go perfectly flush into uh, the two holes. And I'll just do it one more time just so everyone sees it. So it just comes straight down, and it's, it's perfect. And then just make sure you can kind of see it's under the two uh, little black clips there. So just easy, easy overall. All right, so now we're going to wedge uh, this black piece back in between the two, the two clips right here. And once you get that in, uh, the screws will line up with the holes. One thing I will note that I've found to make this easier is to kind of lift this, like kind of lift and push this up uh, to get this fully in. Uh, you'll notice also um, there's a, technically four holes and two holes on the side. You'll see um, a little uh, gold or copper piece that comes up here where you can um, see that it's uh, fully inserted. If you don't see those pieces on the outside, uh, when you try to do the screws, it'll just kind of spin around and you won't have it uh, fully in there. Um, so that's one of the things that I recommend to just make sure you see those pop out. And then it's just as simple as screwing it in, which uh, is very easy. So we're just going to screw it in and I can feel it as I'm doing it, uh, getting pushing down to the board itself. So I actually don't need to keep lifting it up anymore since it's fully in there. Um, I just want to make sure I get the screws completely tight, perfect. And this is one thing I, I will note, these screws are easy to strip, so you do need to be careful with it. Um, and they spin around, so they can be a little bit of a pain, uh, but overall we got a nice connection. Uh, everything's fully in there, so we're good to go, okay? All right, so now that we have installed uh, our uh, H330, I'm gonna you know, put this back together, and then we are going to actually uh, log in and configure RAID 5 for you guys. So let's get going. All right, so now that we've seen the different RAID options, we've seen how to install the RAID cards, we're gonna actually figure out how to configure it. So on the boot screen menu, uh, you're gonna want to click, uh, click Control R, and this is gonna take you to the actual uh, RAID screen, uh, also known as the virtual disk management. Um, when you get to the virtual disk management screen, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is actually select the, uh, the RAID card. In this case, it's gonna be the H330. So we're gonna click uh, the H330 there. It's going to give you a couple of different options when we select it. We're going to hit clear config because that's the first thing you want to do is get rid of the uh, old configuration to set up a new one. Um, it's going to give you uh, the warning message. We're just going to click yes because we want to clear it. Uh, we're going to go back into our, our 730 XD. So we're going to click on it again. The same options are going to pop up. This time we're going to hit create new VD. 
Under this, we're going to uh, go to the RAID level that you want to select. What we want uh, for this option is we're going to do RAID 5. Of course, you can click whatever you want here. After you have selected your RAID level, you need to pick the disk that you want to add to it. So we're going to select the individual disk. And you see the X popping up on the left there. So after we select the individual disks, uh, you can come in and add a name if you want. Click Advanced. Uh, under Advanced, you're going to go to Initialize. Uh, you want to initialize this and it will give you a warning message that's going to uh, destroy the current data. Um, click yes if that's okay. Click OK. Click OK again. Click OK again. And that's what we're doing right now is a bunch of OKs. And after we've um, done all the OKs and it's given us all the messages, you've actually now configured your RAID uh, for your R730XD. It wasn't that difficult to do. You just need to follow a few uh, strategic steps. Uh, you can see there it's showing that it's at a RAID 5. Uh, we want to exit, so click OK. And then when you boot it back up, you can um, check it uh, as well by going back into uh, the same screen by hitting you know, Control R and getting into the, you know, to the RAID screen to make sure everything is still good. So thanks for stopping by today. Learn a little bit more about how to configure the RAID on your R730XD. Uh, do us a favor, find anything this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking to an order an R730 XD yourself, uh, we custom build them here. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business. Please do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. Or if you're just looking for any spares, RAID, uh, CPUs, RAM drives, etc., we'd love to help you out. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.